This is going to be episode 7 of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to look at the subject of journey to the heart of the earth. So as you know, when the devil sinned, God had to prepare a place for the devil. When the former king of both kingdoms and the angels that sinned with him, when they sinned, there had to be a place prepared for them. And this is by far the most dreadful place in existence. This is the literal place called hell. It's a place that man can't get off their minds. You hear men say the word every day. They say, who the hell are you? They say, get the hell out of here. They say, when hell freezes over. When someone offends them, they say, go to hell. They can't get it off their mind. It was created because of Lucifer and his rebellion. He couldn't be satisfied with what God had given him. He couldn't be satisfied with the throne under God. Most men are like their father, the devil. Jesus makes it plainly clear that the devil has children. In John 8, 44, it says, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So you know how man is like the devil? Because they can't be satisfied. Proverbs 27, 20, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. The devil wasn't satisfied with the throne that he was given. The devil was unsatisfied in God's game of thrones. He wanted to call the shots in the game. Man is unsatisfied with living a life under God's authority. He wants to call the shots and be his own final authority. So in God's game of thrones, man tries to break the rules and put himself on the throne. He says, move out, move out of the way, God. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's just what Lucifer did. But let's see the thoughts the devil had in his heart way back when. Isaiah 14, 13 through 15 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. So that's the devil's future location is hell. If you were to take a journey to the heart of the earth and see everything down there, then you would have to have super spiritual eyes. Because you can't see the souls of the damned in your natural state, you can't survive the heat in your natural state. The spirit behind Hollywood is aware that there is something in the heart of the earth. You can clearly see this with movies like The Gate, where you would have devils coming out of a smoky pit. You can see it in movies like Drag Me to Hell. You can see it in movies like War of the Worlds, with aliens coming up out of the earth. You see this in video games like Gears of War, where you have locusts coming up out of a pit. An entire civilization of demonic-type locusts under the earth is what that game is about. I wonder where they got the idea from. You see how they think it is a joke with movies like Little Nicky and shows like Family Guy and American Dad that make light of hell. The literal place called hell is beneath your feet and was prepared for the devil and his angels. The former king of both kingdoms has a future of torment. And he wants you to think he's already there. Or that he doesn't even exist. Lucifer, which is the devil and Satan, is not in hell. He's presently walking about seeking whom he may devour. Matthew twenty five forty one. Here's the verse. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So hell was prepared before Adam and Eve. That's why it's a good idea to get into hell before we get to Adam and Eve. This is another reason I believe Satan fell before he tempted Eve. This is why I believe there was a period of time, unknown to us, that Lucifer was on a throne 
on the earth over a physical kingdom and spiritual beings. And he rebelled against the Lord, and the Lord created hell for the devil and his angels. So let's take a journey to the heart of the earth and into the eternal homes of people and beings who have died. First, let's look at the underworld as it was before the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke 16, 22 through 23, you have the story of the rich man Lazarus. It says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So the rich man sees Abraham afar off. Now some men teach this is simply a vision that the rich man has of the third heaven. Okay, then why does he see him afar off? Search the word afar off in the scriptures. And it will take you to a story about Abraham, actually. In Genesis 22, 4, it says, Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. So here Abraham saw the place where he would sacrifice Isaac, but it wasn't a vision. It wasn't just something that he was just seeing like in a dream. He literally lifted up his eyes and saw a place afar off. Just like the rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham and Lazarus afar off. Some make the argument that Abraham's bosom isn't the name of a place, but that Lazarus was simply carried and laid on Abraham's chest, carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, just laid on his chest. Now, even if that is so, it doesn't change all the other scriptural evidence that shows that there is a place that the Old Testament saints win in the heart of the earth, even if you don't want to call it Abraham's bosom. Whether or not you call it that doesn't change the fact that they went to the heart of the earth. Notice that the righteous man, the beggar, he is carried by angels. It says he's carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. So when a saint dies, it is likely that angels come to get him. Now notice that the rich man in hell lift up his eyes being in torments. Something strange is that he sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So now does this mean that Lazarus and Abraham are burning in hell? Obviously not. This means that there is more than one compartment in the heart of the earth. There is a place of comfort. And in a place of torment. Luke 16, 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So there are flames in hell that will burn the damned souls. Also notice that Lazarus is on a side that has water. As I said, some men are teaching that the rich man was only seeing a vision of the third heaven in hell they teach that for a moment god allowed the rich men to see abraham and lazarus in the third heaven now luke 16 25 through 26 says but abraham said son remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So to say this is just a, a vision where the rich man is seeing Abraham and Lazarus in the third heaven, it just seems like a big stretch that's just thought up of out of nowhere. But this isn't the only scripture we have for teaching the Old Testament saints went to the heart of the earth. Lazarus is said to be comforted and also has water, and this reminds me of a verse in the book of Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 31, 16, it says, I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit, and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, and all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. So some people drink water and are comforted in the nether parts of the earth. The Bible shows a torment side and a comfort side. It's just plain in the Bible. To claim the rich man in Luke 16 is only seeing a vision is complete speculation. There's also a story of Saul visiting the witch of Endor to bring up Samuel. In 1 Samuel 28, 11, it says, Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee 
And he said, bring me up Samuel. So he's not bringing down Samuel. He's bringing up Samuel. Saul tells the witch of Endor to bring me up Samuel, not down. So they knew that the saints went to the heart of the earth. In 1 Samuel 28, 12, it says, And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Notice that when the witch brought up Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And this is most likely because she is used to seeing unclean spirits and not an actual dead person. Unclean spirits deceive men into thinking that they are deceased. However, in this case, you have an exception where Samuel actually comes up himself. And the fact that he comes up and not down proves that Samuel was in the heart of the earth. In 1 Samuel 28, 13, it says, And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God's ascending out of the earth. It is interesting that she saw God's ascending out of the earth. Remember back in Luke 16, when Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Remember that? The gods could have been angels escorting Samuel up from the heart of the earth. Just like that Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now, it, it, why are gods ascending out of the earth if Samuel is coming from above? The Bible gives more hints that something is under the earth. In Isaiah 44, 23, it says, Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. So shout, ye lower parts of the earth, it says. Philippians 2.10, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Isaiah 45.8, drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring together. I, the Lord, have created it. And when the thief on the cross says to Jesus, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He didn't say, With the Father in, in, in heaven. He said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. No, I believe in the Godhead. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There's one God manifested in three. Luke 23, 42 says, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. If, if the thief was going to be with Jesus that day in paradise, where was Jesus going that day? He went to the heart of the earth. In Ephesians 4, 8, it says, Wherefore he saith, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that, he, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. So obviously Jesus Christ, as it said, went into the lower parts of the earth. And when he came up, when he resurrected, he took the Old Testament saints to heaven with him at his resurrection. He went down into the heart of the earth. Jesus himself also said that he would be in the heart of the earth. In Matthew twelve forty, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Acts two twenty seven says, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So Jesus Christ went to hell for three days and three nights. However, the Bible doesn't say that he burned. He, if he told the thief, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, then the thief went down to the heart of the earth when he died. The heart of the earth is where Jesus Christ went that day. Now some men teach that Jesus, when he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, they teach that Jesus was referring to his omnipresence 
when he said this to the dying thief. They teach that he was referring to the fact that he would also be in heaven while he was in the heart of the earth. So therefore the dying thief would be in the third heaven with Jesus. But this, that's, this doesn't seem right because Jesus said today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He didn't say today thou shalt be with the Father in heaven. And Jesus uses those those same words as well in verse verses like Matthew six nine, Jesus Christ refers to the Father in heaven. He says Matthew six nine after this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. If the dying thief on the cross was going to heaven, the third heaven instead of paradise in the heart of the earth, when he died that day, why wouldn't Jesus have said today thou shalt be with my Father in heaven? Or something along those lines. It is true Jesus Christ is God and is therefore omnipresent. But it is clear he isn't speaking in those terms when he's talking to the dying thief and says today thou should be with me in paradise. To attempt to disprove the Old Testament saints went to paradise in the heart of the earth. By doing that, it, j it just seems like a huge stretch. And men will also use Elijah and Enoch as examples. Because both of these men went to the third heaven in the Old Testament instead of going into the heart of the earth. Elijah is said to be caught up, just like we are caught up. In 1 Thessalonians 4, both of these men went to heaven without dying in the Old Testament. However, you must remember they were different because unlike all other Old Testament saints, they didn't die. They are also both types of two different groups of people who are taken up to heaven without dying. There are nothing more than exceptions to the rule. And a lot of people say, well, you get how convenient. You can't just have a, an exception. Okay, if one professes that you can't have an exception to the rule, then why don't they bring, bring up Samuel? Remember, Samuel, consider Samuel who wasn't brought down from heaven, he was brought up. So, either way you look at it, both sides, if you believe the Old Testament saints went to heaven, you got an exception in Samuel. Just like if you believe Old Testament saints went to the heart of the earth, we got a couple exceptions. And the witch also saw gods ascending out of the earth and not descending out of heaven. They would have to call that an exception to the rule of teaching Old Testament saints went to the third heaven. So therefore, they would be in the same boat as you, no matter what side you're on. Both sides would have exceptions. There are exceptions to the rule. Those exceptions are Enoch and Elijah. Now, the bottomless pit. In this journey to the center of the earth, let's take a journey to the bottomless pit. This pit is obviously under the earth and when Korah and all that appertained to him went down alive into the pit the ground came out from under them it talks about in number 16 31 through 33 it says and it came to pass he as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up in their houses and all the men that appertained to Korah and all their goods they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. So all of these people went down alive into the pit. This bottomless pit has an angel over it. In Revelation 9-11 it says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And these names mean destruction. And the devil goes down to the bottomless pit where he will be chained for a thousand years in the future. In Revelation 21 through 3, And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now I'm assuming the bottomless pit is a place where men continuously fall. However, I'm just assuming. I don't know for sure. If this is the case, it could possibly run around the equator. If not, it could just 
be another compartment where the Lord makes the person feel as if they are continuously falling. And another option is that it is so deep that it seems to be bottomless. I believe, though, that it is actually bottomless, all sides without a bottom. Some things we won't know until we get a glorified body. But this bottomless pit is also a place with other terrifying creatures. In Revelation 9, 2, and 3, it says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And these are devilish type locusts from the pit. And you also see that there is smoke in the pit. So far we have seen a place of comfort, a place of torment, and the bottomless pit in the heart of the earth. A question many people have is, are there different levels in hell? And I believe there is because in Matthew twenty three fourteen it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. So it seems there are different levels in the torment side of hell. Some men will receive greater damnation. In Deuteronomy it talks about the lowest hell. Deuteronomy thirty two twenty two says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell. The angels, which kept not their first estate, are said to be cast down to hell. And Second Peter 2, 4, it says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. So they are said to be under darkness, which looks like it could be a lower level of hell. Many refer to it as Tartarus. I believe it is possible that angels could still be falling as a result of rebellion. I don't believe they all had to fall at the same time. But imagine being in hell and all of a sudden you see an angel being delivered into chains of darkness. They would have to be supernatural chains. And you know if an angel can't escape, can escape hell, then you can't escape it. The pit in the heart of the earth has bars. In Job seventeen sixteen, it says they shall go down to the bars of the pit when our rest together is in the dust. In Jonah 2, 6, Jonah says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet as thou brought, my, my life, brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. There is also keys to hell in the bottomless pit. Revelation 9, 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Then Revelation 1, 18, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Have the keys of hell and of death. It also has gates. In Matthew 16, 18, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So in this study, I've, I've showed you proof that there is a place in the heart of the earth where people go when they die and burn forever. Now, if you don't want to believe the Old Testament saints went to a comfort side in the Old Testament before Jesus resurrected, that's fine. But we can both agree on the fact that there is a place called hell in the heart of the earth where men go and burn and that there's a place down there where the angels are, and that there is a bottomless pit where the devil's going to be. Now, all this was created because of the devil and his angels. Satan, the former king of both kingdoms, was in rebellion. He rebelled against God, so the Lord had to create this horrible place in the heart of the earth. And that's where you'll go when you die if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are, then you'll pay for those sins eternally in hell, forever and ever and ever, and never get out. The Bible says this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You've sinned, and there is no way for you to earn your way 
into heaven. Jesus Christ is the, your only ticket. So come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on Him to be your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. And you'll get your sins washed away. You'll be able to go to heaven when you die and escape this horrible place of torment.